aim of the project is to educate students in sustainability, self-sufficiency and reducing carbon footprints. So those of you that are, you know, you are from colleges and training providers, you're probably very familiar with the uh, ESDGC, one of the targets that we have to try and include in our teaching and learning, um, and some of the ESTING criteria, such as sector leading practice that we're all striving to, to build into our teaching and learning as well. So we feel that uh, we're doing that quite well in this particular project, so we'd like to share that with you. Um, so to date, Steve will tell you more about this when and he comes after me, but we've been uh, picking organically grown salad leaves. We rear pork and lamb here at Pencoid, which we then pass to hospitality. The, the, as as uh, John said, the pig that you've just eaten was a particularly nasty pig. It used to bite students and charge staff, so we weren't uh, too sorry to see her go. Um, on the other hand, some of our pigs are very, very nice, but uh, the pork and lamb goes down to Bridge End um, and is used uh, in, the in the Seasons restaurant down at the Bridge End campus. So I just wanted, from, from my point of view, obviously I, I'm head of land-based studies, to how it all began. So we have many, many animals living here at Pencoid, some of which eat horticultural products. So our green iguana is a vegetarian lizard and has to have um, salads and veg and fruit daily. Um, we provide fruit kebabs and salads and herbs for our zebra finches. The rabbits and guinea pigs enjoy lettuces and carrots um, for their vitamin C. And we also got tortoises and other herbivorous reptiles um, that we need to provide salad and, and vegetation for. So some time ago, we were buying all of our produce to feed these animals from the supermarket. So we, we set up our you know, online delivery from Tesco and they were delivering all of this produce for us to feed the animals. However, we also have a horticulture department here, so we started to talk to horticulture about whether they could grow some of the produce for us to feed to the animals. Um, the students have to grow vegetables, salads and fruit as part of their studies, so we started to collaborate with horticulture for them to grow some specific produce that we could feed to the animals. That enabled us then to reduce our spending in the supermarket. Obviously it's seasonal, so we do still use the supermarket, but uh, that enabled us to reduce our costs doing it that way. Um, also, waste from the animal centre was started to use by horticulture to, to generate some compost, which they then use to, to help with, with their growing. Following on from that, um, we have huge amounts of students in animal care. We have about 250 students every year studying animal care. Um, that's grown over the last 10 years. It got to the point where we didn't have enough animals to resource the courses. So we expanded our animals to include the croft. So this is going back about six or seven years now. Um, prior to that, we only really had small animals. We had fish, birds, exotics, and the small furries. But we expanded the croft, and we now have um, alpacas, donkeys, poultry, pigs, and sheep on site as well. So this enabled our students to have more animals to work with and obviously enabled us to start producing lamb and pork um, for hospitality. Okay. So Berkshire pigs, we started off rearing Berkshire pigs. We've all, we, we inseminate the pigs artificially and we have about two litres of piglets a year. Uh, the lambs tend to be born in April and then we pass on some samples of that meat down, down to hospitality for them to use in the college. We don't eat the alpacas or the donkeys. Okay. The benefits of this, as I said just now, you know, two key things, ESTIN, sector leading practice, and the ESDGC agenda, we feel that this project really, really helps us to satisfy some of those criteria. Just a definition of sector leading practice from ESTIN. Um, sector leading practice, leading practice in the sector through sharing and supporting peers or exceptional, a particularly effective practice, albeit small scale, that stands out from the norm and is worthy of emulation by others. We're very, very lucky in this college that we have a land-based department, so we are able to set up this link between hospitality and land-based. I appreciate that some colleges don't have land-based departments. However, I, I suspect that possibly going forward, we may be able to set up links with hospitality departments in other colleges, potentially. ESDGC, um, 
sustainability and local produce. This is local produce reared at the college, being used by the college. So it's literally travelling two miles down the road to be used. Um, and also trying to tap into the Welsh dimension a little bit. Um, moving forward, we're looking at rearing Welsh breeds of sheep and Welsh breeds of pork, so we can tap into the Welsh agenda there. Morning. Hi. I just want to go through a couple of things that we've actually started within the department. Um, the two gentlemen at the back, and I think they can feed in today as well. They've uh, helped out on this project. So it's been through the department, not just through, through myself. Um, this is Mr. Hughes's class here, Neil's class here, uh, down in, over in the whole culture for selection of leaves, which I think you took back to the class and then made, uh, made produce of them. I think we can see that in the next... <laughs> okay, so that's Neil's students around there. They came down with Derek, spent the day down here having a look with the horticulture department and then brought the produce back to make some dishes. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> so there we have the stuff that's come back and obviously the dish that was produced on the day to show the students obviously the actual land to the plate. It enabled us, obviously, as Sarah said, to meet the ESDGC and also Welsh Dimension and local produce. So it feeds quite nicely into us. It feeds nicely into our schemes of work to allow us to actually meet the uh, criteria for Estin. And actually, Estin are in at the moment doing three days. And one of the things they asked for yesterday offers for schemes of work to have a look at the ESDGC. So it's, this has fed in quite nicely into obviously estate inspection. It'd be nice to get them over actually, wouldn't it? Um, since the start of the recent collaboration, vegetable seeds have been handed over from the department of the Holtz and Horticulture. What we've done, we've selected um, some seeds and we've purchased them from the catering department and what we've done then is we've vended them, uh, sorry, put them over to uh, Derek Cashmore who is obviously going to, uh, to grow them for us with the students. And if we have a look here, this is a selection of some of the seeds. Um, you know, I think we've given him more than this, and this is just a small selection. Yeah. This is just a small selection here of the stuff that we've asked Derek to produce for us. So hopefully, um, when I finish here at about half past 10, quarter 11, I'm going to go over to, to Derek. He's going to have some ready, and hopefully we'll have some actually picked in the ground at 10 o'clock this morning for you traveling on the lunch table with some of the lamb also that's been there. So um, it's, it's quite nice for us to show you how this feeds very well into our curriculum. Okay. This was a session uh, myself and Neil done, uh, students in there. We get our, um, our lambs in, we get them in hall. I asked for them hall just to head off. And we also asked for the lights. The, to make dishes, obviously we make homemade faggots, we do the derivatives, we have the kidneys. Um, one of the good things about this day is young, young people when they come to college and you say, awful. I mean, some of them have never tasted a kidney, so they think, eh, smell, things come in. We take them straight off in front of them, we skin them straight off in front of them, and we fry them off in front of them. And it's excellent because the taste from there than anything that's been in the chain for so many as we all know as chefs is far far superior and you've got children who've never had things like liver so it's introducing them to new produce as well and it's great and another thing I think as a chef and I'm sure some of the others here today will understand is butchery butchery is not in we don't teach much butchery in the curriculum at the moment lamb base allows us to do this we get our pigs in halves head on so we uh, take them out, teach them how to make brawns. The sausages this morning come off the charger, the, uh, the, the pig, yeah, the, the not so nice one. Um, also out of that, the loin of bacon came out of there. That was all produced from scratch. And what was nice about that was there's actually students' commitment. When you see things like this, the students become far more committed. Um, I've got a little uh, cohort of students who are really, really interested, and they actually come in. We actually produce the sausages, the, uh, sorry, the meat for the sausages, and butcher the pig in the, um, I think it was the half term. So they actually come in on the holidays to actually do that. So it does, it brings them together, keeps them together. I think 
Um, it, stuff like this over and above is something that we are very, very fortunate to have to provide our students with. Some of the, some of the stuff we've actually produced, some legs of lamb, uh, we actually teach them, we freeze it down for about 20 minutes, actually teach them uh, the old skills, as was the chef's show, by pulling the bark off, pulling the skin off, and teach them some of the French classic cuts. So that feeds very, very nicely into the programme. Um, we show them two different types of tie-in. Obviously there we got the continual, continual tie-in, and then we have the traditional, just single knot, single strand. Both lamb and pork are used within the restaurant and the coffee house. Uh, what we usually do, we usually get about two or, two or three animals in at a time. We get a section in the freezer or in the fridge and we keep all the local stuff there. And we, we like to use it right across the program, gets used in the evening restaurant. It's even been used in competitions, in the inter-college competition, the lamb was used for that one. Um, obviously, Bacon, curing, sausage making, so we can go into processes. It gives the student the opportunity to understand where the sausage comes from, where the bacon is. They can actually see what's happening to food. It's and then, obviously, I've just spoken about that one. Now, that's just the competitions. Um, it's been used in two. One was the uh, competition two years ago, which was the, the inter-college, and then the other one was the world skills. So they feed through quite nicely. Okay, benefits. These initiatives will give the student from all curriculum areas within the department a more meaningful experience in relationship to food preparation and production. Will allow learners to fully understand the growing and rearing and the plate journey. And they do. We find the students, when you start, they start asking more questions. They start coming up themselves. They start to interact in the classroom a lot more. And that's one of the major benefits. Obviously, you do get a couple that's not interested, but on a whole, we f found the benefits when you've got something like the lamb in there. Um, obviously, you get a few comments when you're cracking the bones, different things, but on a whole, it's a good experience for the class. Okay, the collaboration will also provide an insight into the journey of the produce from the horticultural animal and land-to-plate perspective like I said earlier on, so people can understand. They can have an understanding of their food, where it comes from, how it's produced, how it's butchered, what a real sausage is, how it's made. And this project, in collaboration with land, allows us for that to happen. Well, finally, just a little bit of development that we got planned, um, hopefully along with Sarah. Uh, obviously, you've got the composting from all practical lessons allowing for waste to be produced. So actually, we want to feed into land with our food waste. Hopefully, we can actually, and they can understand, again, that we're putting something back into the process that has given, this, given us these animals to uh, obviously enrich in their education. The down, down next is a growing of flowers to be used in the college restaurant for the table decoration into the restaurant. So hopefully, we buy every week to top of the restaurant. Why not again tap into something else? On the final one, which is Mr. Hughes's baby at the back, as we call him, Oz Hughes, yeah, <laughs> is to have a look at the planting of a college vineyard. Um, there's a lot of work, extensive work, already gone under this. So we would actually like then, if we could produce that, main thing about that will be producing our own wine for our own restaurant. Obviously, the horticultural students then will get their side out of it from the planting and the, uh, the harvesting. And then perhaps, who knows, own college shop selling real college wine. So that is our experience and the experience for the students. Um, this all quite simply started for me from one simple telephone call. Uh, I think it was with actually Tristan. And we just sat there and he said, I got a couple of spare lambs, do you want them? And this is where we are now. I think that's fantastic. The three year conversation, quite simply two minutes, three years ago, the expansion and hopefully areas for growth. Mm -hmm.